Hello guys, and welcome to our tutorial devoted to the topic of the Document Object Model, or DOM for short. My name is Nimish, and I'm going to be your Chief Instructor guiding you through this tutorial, in which we're going to learn all there is to know about the DOM and how to use it to create interactive web pages, and then we'll end up building three projects together, which I actually have loaded on the right, and we'll demo in just a minute. Before we begin this course, I should say that I'm expecting that you know at least some basic JavaScript as well as HTML and CSS, but aren't necessarily experts in how to use the document object model already, as we're going to be starting from a complete beginner's perspective, working up to explore each different aspect of the DOM, and finally building these projects. As well, we're going to be using the IDE Atom as well as Google Chrome as our demonstration browser. And I'll be working in a Mac, so any of the commands that I give will be Mac specific. So if you choose to use a different IDE or a different browser or even are using a PC, things are gonna look a little different. That being said, the same DOM concepts that we'll cover in this tutorial can be applied to just about any project across any uh, device. So without further ado, let's get started with just a quick topics list. So this will cover all the topics in the order in which we'll cover them in the tutorial. Then I'll provide the demonstration here, and then we can get started by exploring some aspects of the DOM. So the tutorial is divided into two main parts. The first is an intro into the DOM. So this is just gaining a general understanding of how it works and how we can accomplish certain tasks using it. And then the second half will be the project phase in which we'll build these three projects together. So our intro to the DOM phase, we'll first talk about um, what the DOM is and we'll inspect a web page that's already published, already um, up and running to see how the document object model is kind of structuring everything and communicating with the HTML structure. Then we'll explore how to retrieve elements using the DOM. So by elements, I mean HTML elements such as divs, uh, list elements, buttons, so on and so forth. After we can do that, we'll take a look at how to retrieve and modify the element attributes themselves, again using the DOM. And by attributes, I mean not only CSS attributes, but information about the elements themselves, such as class or ID names. Next, we'll explore how to add or remove elements programmatically using JavaScript in the DOM, rather than just hard coding them into the HTML. It's a very important skill. After this, we'll explore how to use event listeners using the DOM. So this will be adding event listeners to stuff like buttons, uh, maybe text inputs, or even regular divs. And we'll explore a variety of different events. And finally, we'll finish up the intro section by talking about some client-side forms and some general easy form submission. Keep in mind that we're only using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, so there'll be no PHP um, server-side form um, in this section. That will save for a completely different tutorial. So as for our three projects we're going to be building, well, we might as well launch into the demonstrations. The first is going to be an interactive flashcards page in which we have some flashcards here. You can see that some of the answers are already being displayed, but we can simply show the um, Spanish equivalent for the English word up here. So we have picture, the English word, the show or hide button, and that's just used to toggle the answer. And this can be applied to any of these at once. The next project we'll build will be an interactive list filtering page. So we have a bunch of different activities or adventures that we can do around us, and we want to be able to filter them out in real time. For example, let's say I want to search for skydiving. As I type skydiving, everything that doesn't meet this criteria will um, disappear. And then as soon as I start backspacing and clear this text field, everything starts appearing again. So this is just kind of real time list filtering and displaying. Next up is going to be an interactive forms page, and this will be the final project we'll build. So this will just be used to um, basically learn how to submit a form, how to take an input from the various fields, and also how to show and hide elements depending on the value of certain fields, and then how to respond to correct or incorrect form submissions. So for example, if I click save, it says we need to enter some information. If I just enter some text in here, I'm not gonna do that much text validation. Let's say I have some pets. Then we're going to respond to a variety of different inputs, okay? If I select a dog, then we want this to say, sorry, our capacity is full. So this will just be a few projects demonstrating various aspects of the DOM and how to integrate them into projects. So by the end, you'll be well-versed in the DOM, how to use it, and also you'll have a few small projects to either get started on your own bigger web pages or just to add to your portfolio. So let's go ahead and get started with the basic setup. You don't have to have this text file. You didn't need to type anything. Um, just make sure that you have a new instance of Atom loaded up. 
Um, just choose a certain folder in which to save this. Save it somewhere you'll remember. In my case, I've put it in this folder called Understanding DOM. I just have a couple of different files there. These are plain text, but anytime we create a new file like this and we go to save it, we want to make sure that we're writing an HTML type file. Okay, you can change that simply by clicking on the plain text down here, selecting HTML, and now this will allow us to write HTML code. To run our files, it's really as simple as locating the file in Finder. So for example, let's say I wanted to load up my flashcards. Okay, I could simply go here, double click on my flashcard, um, file this HTML file, and it will open right in the browser there. As well, throughout our recordings, we'll generally have our um, editor on the left and then the browser on the right hand side. And we can just resize these windows as is necessary. So to get started, we'll probably want just a blank sheet. I'm going to just talk a little bit about the DOM, so you probably won't have to write any HTML code. It'll just be another text file that should be provided to you guys. So it might be a good idea to open that up and just follow along. It should be called something along the lines of an intro to DOM. So we can go ahead and open that guy up now. Let's close this, get rid of the topics list. And we probably just want to start with a blank browser page. So let's just open up a new tab and then close all of these if you have anything open. And of course, our first topic is going to be just gaining a general understanding of the DOM and then seeing it in action on a real working page. So I hope you're excited to learn about the DOM. It's a really useful tool and will make building web pages so much easier. And of course, thanks again for signing up for this tutorial. Really appreciate the support. And I hope you can enjoy it and learn a lot from it. So let's go ahead and get started.